Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is the integral of dx over a squared plus x squared. Now, that looks deceivingly easy until you try to solve it and then you can't figure out how to do it. And then when you see the trick, you go, boy, that was easy. And that's the nature of integrals, of course. So how do we deal with it? Well, we use the following trick substitution. Here's our triangle. We have the side a, the side x, and the hypotenuse. We can then see that the tangent of theta, the angle theta here, is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. We saw that for x, we get a tang tangent of theta. And when we take the derivative with respect to theta, we get a secant square of theta, which can be written as this, as the secant is 1 over the cosine. If we now substitute that into our integral, we get the following. Whoop. This is equal to the integral of dx, which can now be written as a divided by the cosine square of theta times d theta in the numerator. And in the denominator, we get a squared plus x squared. And since x is equal to a times the tangent of theta, we can write this plus a squared times the tangent square of theta. Now, the next thing we're going to do is simply rewrite the tangent as the sine or the cosine. So this becomes equal to the integral of a divided by, and actually, let's see here. We can pull the a out of the integral sign. Let's do that. Let's pull the a out of here. And then we have an a squared in the denominator, which can be pulled out. So we have an a squared over here, which means we end up at 1 over the cosine square of theta d theta in the numerator. And in the denominator, we end up at 1 plus and the tangent can be written as a sine square of theta divided by the cosine square of theta. Okay, and that a is, is factored out. And now let's take a look and see how we can simplify that. Well, for one thing, we have a cosine square of theta and a cosine square of theta. Well, not quite yet because they have the one plus. How about writing the following thing? So this can be written as one over a because the one of the a's cancel times the integral of 1 over the cosine square of theta divided by, and then here we can find the common denominator. This gives us the cosine square of theta plus the sine square of theta. And of course, whenever we see that, we get a big smile on our face because that's easy to work with, divided by the common denominator of the cosine square of theta. We still have a d theta here. And then you realize that this is equal to 1, so this becomes 1 over a times the integral of 1 over the cosine square of theta d theta. And in the denominator, we get the same thing. We get 1 over the cosine square of theta. And then you realize that, of course, that's equal to 1 times d theta. So this whole integral simply becomes 1 over a times the integral of d theta. Wow. Talking about something that first seemed easy, then you can't figure out how to do it. And then when you see the trick, you go, wow. That's really easy. Of course, the integral of d theta is simply theta. So we end up at 1 over a times theta plus a constant of integration. Now, we typically don't leave it like that because our original integral had the variable x. So we go back over here, and we have the relationship between theta and x. So we can say that theta, or let's first write uh, the tangent of theta is equal to x over a, which means that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of x over a. And of course, we substitute that back in, and we get the following. So this becomes equal to 1 over a times the inverse tangent of x over a plus a constant integration, and that will be the result of that particular integral. And that's how it's done.